Hello Saints, today we're on the fourth dispensation called Promise. And uh, our last dispensation was human government. The one before that was conscience and the one before that was innocence. And we've seen how God has been using different administrations during different times to deal with mankind. And each time so far when man has failed, God provides his grace and then offers mankind a, a new chance by dispensing a, uh, a new system for mankind to follow which will ultimately lead to a day when the final dispensation will be one of peace and man will be in perfect harmony with God the Father. Now following our six-part model that we've been looking at in the past dispensations we have the first one is manager then time period and hu human responsibility failure judgment and grace and we see that the managers here are the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The time period we're looking at is the call of Abraham until Israel's arrival at Mount Sinai. It's about 430 years. It's between uh, 2000 BC to 1500 BC. And the human responsibility is for them to dwell in Canaan. Their failure is they dwelt in Egypt instead of Canaan. And their judgment was the Egyptian bondage and slavery. And the grace is that God sends Moses to deliver them. So in this dispensation of promise, we're looking at, again, a time period from Abraham to Moses, uh, 2000 B.C. to 1500 B.C. God promises Abraham that he would be a, a, the father of a great nation and his descendants and the earth would be blessed from his seed. We see that in Genesis chapter 12. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So God promises Abraham, as part of the covenant between them, that Abraham would also live in the land of promise. We see this in Hebrews chapter 6. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore, he swore by himself, saying, Surely, blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. And again, we see it in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8 through 12. By faith, Abraham when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs, with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength and conceived seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she, she judged him faithfully who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one and him as good as dead so many as the stars of the sky multitude and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. However, Abraham being a man having the sin nature of man he fails miserably and ends up conceiving with his wife Sarah's handmaiden Hagar and Ishmael is born in Genesis 6 uh, we see where Abraham conceives with Hagar and you can read all about that the the way that it came about because Sarah was older and she couldn't have uh, any more children and God promised them that this would take place but you know they didn't believe so you see God had promised Abraham a son with Sarah but Sarah couldn't conceive at this time again she's she's older so Abraham and Sarah they took the matter into their own hands and they tried to make things happen through Hagar instead and they were disobeying you know not believing God's promise now Abraham furthers on and moves to Egypt and while he and Sarah are there Abraham lies to the people about who his wife Sarah really is we see that in Genesis 12 
verses 10 through 20, And there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was grievous in the land. And it came to pass, when he was come near to enter into Egypt, that he said unto Sarah his wife, Behold now, I know that thou, thou art a fair woman to look upon. Therefore it shall come to pass, when the Egyptians shall see thee, that they shall say, This is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will save thee alive. Say, I pray thee, thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake, and my soul shall live because of thee. <clears throat> and it came to pass that when Abram was come into Egypt, the Egyptians beheld the woman, that she was very fair. The princes also of Pharaoh saw her, and commended her before Pharaoh, and the woman was taken in the Pharaoh's house. And he entreated Abram well for his sake, and he had sheep and oxen and asses and men servants and maid servants and she asses and, and camels. And the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sabra, uh, Sarah, Abram's wife. And Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this that thou hast done to me? Why did thou not tell me that she was thy wife? Why saidest thou she is my sister? So I might have taken her to me to be to I'm sorry folks, I might have taken her to me to wife. Now therefore behold thy wife, take her and go thy way. And Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him, and they sent him away and his wife and all that he had. So we see here, even with Abraham's disobedience, the promises God made to him were valid as were his promises with Isaac and Jacob. So God didn't go back on his promises. Just because Abraham disobeyed him, God, God's promises and covenant with Abraham were unconditional. They're, they're, they're going to take place regardless because God said that they would. And we see the fulfillment of his promise to this day. Now, when the descendants of Abram, Abraham, the nation of Israel, chose not to believe that God would protect them, would bless them, would guide them. God turns them over <clears throat> to Egyptian bondage and separation from himself. And the nation of Israel ends up as slaves under the rulers of Egypt for over 430 years. This was their time of judgment for being disobedient in the first place. Now after 430 years of cruel and harsh treatment, Moses is chosen to lead the nation of Israel out of Egypt. Now we've all heard about how God persuaded Egypt by using the ten plagues to destroy and sicken and kill those who were tormenting the Israelites. Now keep in mind, this is just a, a, a very brief study of the dispensations, okay? We're not necessarily, uh, you know, all the history that took place during these times, but we know that the plagues, the Passover, the parting of the sea, and all the miracles that took place are huge events that must be studied. So I encourage you, my friends, to look into these things and study. Study God's Word and take a look at Exodus. So the fact that God had mercy on them and led them out of Egypt falls under the grace section of our six-part method, okay? Now at Mount Sinai, God reminds the Israelites of what he did for them. In Exodus 19, we see in, in verse 4 through 6, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bare you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy mountain. A holy nation these are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel so at this point the people are just about to enter the promised land at Mount Sinai and God will once again change his administration method the dispensation and move into the next dispensation which is called law and which will be our next study so thanks for studying with me Saints and I'll see you on the next video